Okay, I'm Paul Jean from uh, from Wolfram. Um, quick show of hands here, um, just to make sure you guys are still awake. Um, has any uh, who here in the room has heard of Wolfram Wolfram Research? Okay, so pretty much everyone knows Wolfram. That's cool. Um, who here has used Mathematica? Well, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm preaching to the choir today. That's not that's that's a much better situation than I thought I'd be in. Um, anyway, so okay, so I'm gonna I'm a data scientist at Wolfram. I've been at Wolfram um, for about seven years. Um, I have um, worked on a bunch of different things at Wolfram since I started there. Uh, I've, I've worked on personal analytics, um, experimental computation with our science projects, um, quite a bit of bioinformatics for Mathematica and Wolfram Alpha, um, genomics. Um, and now we're kind of getting into distributed computation at Wolfram. Um, so that's my focus for today. Um, kind of a theme of all of the, pro the projects I've done at Wolfram is, you know, they involve a, lo uh, a large amount of data. Um, but, you know, traditionally Mathematica really keeps, um, it, its computation model keeps all its data in core. Um, and that becomes a problem when you're dealing with uh, extremely large data sets. Um, so, um, uh, Wolfram is now exploring out of core solutions, um, and integrating with um, with Hadoop is is one of the things that we've done in house, and we'd like to productize. So, um, uh, so that's what my talk today is going to be about. So, uh, quick overview: I'm going to talk about some core principles of Mathematica. Like I say, I'm kind of preaching to the choir, but you might have you might never have heard of um, sort of Mathematica's core principles before. Um, I'll give a few. Um, fun examples of Mathematica code, and then um, I'll talk about um, uh, what's involved in programming MapReduce in Mathematica. So first of all, what, what are the fundamental principles of Mathematica? I think you can state them uh, with, with three, three principles. First of all, everything is an expression, um, and I'll show you the structure of that expression. Um, the second principle is that those expressions are transformed until they stop changing, um, and I'll show you some examples of that. And the third principle is that those transformation rules are in the form of patterns. So everything in Mathematica, the first principle is that everything in Mathematica is an expression. And the expression has the form of um, a head with arguments. And um, we use square brackets. And uh, otherwise, it's pretty much similar to a Lisp expression. You just take the operator and pull it outside the list, and you're pretty much there. So S expressions. Is I don't I'm not a Lisper so so what would you call it an N expression? Okay, so M expression. Let's call it an M expression. Um, the the uh, Mathematica has tons of syntactic sugar that 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 don't prevent you from writing in um, full expression format, but um, uh, that enable you to, to to write much more succinct code. If I write 1 plus 1 in Mathematica, that's being interpreted as that full form of a plus 1. And I see my dime. Um, more complex expressions, of course, have that more complex uh, nested structure. But there's lots of syntactic sugar. So um, I can write a, um, a peer function and map it over a list of integers. Um, and the, the code that I use um, with syntactic sugar is a lot shorter than if I had to write in full form all day long. Um, and, and that's, that's good. Um, so that's the first principle of Mathematica. Everything in Mathematica has that expression structure. Um, the second principle is that um, whenever you evaluate an expression in Mathematica, th that expression is transformed until it stops changing. So if I add a, a, a rule, um, sorry, a definition for the symbol A in Mathematica, say A equals 1, and then I evaluate A, what Mathematica is doing is it's looking for a rule for A, and it finds one because the definition of A is 1. Um, and when I look up um, all the patterns that are known for A, Mathematica shows me this, um, this pattern that it, that it holds for um, matching A on the left-hand side and returning 1 on the right-hand side. And when I trace the evaluation of A, what Mathematica is doing is it's recognizing that symbol, applying all patterns that it has for that symbol and giving me the result. So if I, if I evaluate the, I, if I again def, define A to be 1 and I evaluate the expression A plus B plus 1 and I trace that evaluation, 
Mathematica finds the definition for A because I've added it to its, its rule table. Um, it doesn't have a definition for B, so it can't reduce that expression anymore. Um, so uh, the only thing it can do now is reduce the expression 1 plus 1 because it has a built-in transformation rule for adding integers. Um, and uh, returns me the final uh, result of 2 plus B, which it cannot reduce anymore, um, and, theref and therefore it stops evaluating. Uh, if I add a definition for B, now it can, it can complete the evaluation all the way down to a primitive, in this case an integer. So rules then, the third, the third principle of Mathematica is just that all the rules that you put in the system for Mathematica are, are in the form of a pattern. Um, and, and all Mathematica is doing when you evaluate an expression is, is looking for all uh, transformation rules that have patterns that match the expression that you've, that you've given it. When you add a, a definition for a function in Mathematica, um, all Mathematica is doing, all you're doing is you're, you're adding a more general rule. Uh, rule. So um, here I'm defining f of x um, is x, x plus 1, and I'm specifying that x has to have the head of integer. So um, whatever expression I'm, I'm giving in for x has to have the head integer. Um, so f of 1 evaluates because 1 has the head integer. It matches the rule on the left-hand side on, and binds x on the right-hand side and, and gives me the result. f applied to a string a um, doesn't have, um, doesn't, this, the string a doesn't have the head integer, so the, 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 uh, uh, this particular pattern doesn't match. That's the only pattern that Mathematica has for f so that expression remains unevaluated. If I add a more specific rule for f, uh, that's, so I say f of 1 is equal to 1,000, and I look at the, the patterns that Mathematica has now for, for f, the transformation rules it has for f, um, I, I can see that Mathematica has ordered these, uh, these transformation rules in a canonical fashion that puts the, uh, the more specific case first. So that means when I now apply f to this list of integers, it finds the specific case first uh, before the more general case when that applies. Those expressions in Mathematica are immutable data structures. Um, so Mathematica won't let me assign anything, uh, uh, an expression to something else. It says that's a raw expression, you can't do anything about that. Um, I, can, I can assign pointers to expressions essentially, so when I say a equals 10, I'm assigning a as a pointer to the expression 10. Uh, I can reassign a to point to a different expression, and if 10 is, is, is no longer um, being used, it'll be, it'll be released. Um, so Mathematica is a, is a homo, icon, homo iconic system because those expressions are the underlying data structure that is being used by the, um, by the system internally. Um, and we, we often think of it as a tree. Um, and and it's, a, it's evaluated and, and traversed in such a way. Okay, so a few examples of Mathematica in action. So here I'm, def I'm, I'm defining the Fibonacci sequence. Um, I'm defining the Fibonacci function recursively. Um, and I'm using memoization here uh, to make the, the evaluation go quicker. Um, and I'm using those special cases again as the, um, the initial conditions for the Fibonacci sequence. And I'm just plotting the result. Here's an example that scrapes um, the CUFP web page for all the, um, all the images on the web, on the web page and uh, formats them in a grid. Uh, the co-founder of, math of, of uh, Wolfram, Tail Gray, um, once said that everything is a one-liner in Mathematica for a sufficiently long line. Um, and that's, that's kind of true. You know, you see Mathematica... Um, you know, code bases, and if it, you know, if someone writes in VI and just dumps their, their code out into, into, um, into Git or, or CVS or whatever, you know, it can really look like a hairball. Um, but this is a, this is a, a, a Mathematica hairball that was, um, uh, that won a one-liner competition in Mathem uh, for Mathematica a couple years ago. Um, these had, these are code snippets that had to be under 140 characters. They had to be tweetable code snippets. Um, and, uh, and, and this one, this one is kind of cool. It generates an image out of recursive co recursively out of copies of itself in under 140 characters. That's pretty cool. Um, I've been teaching Mathematica through our, the Wolfram Science um, program uh, 
for a number of years, and I'm, I'm, I've kind of begun to think of Mathematica as like a gateway drug to declarative programming because, you know, a lot of people come from an, an imperative uh, background and they, you know, they write code like this. Um, and it's, and, you know, in Mathematica, we, we all but sort of slap their hand for, for writing code like that because, you know, we say, you know, that's really ugly and it's really not optimal either. Um, but then they, and then they find out about um, uh, functions like fold and, and nest and, and, uh, and they realize that, oh, this is, this is so much more beautiful. Um, so, so it's kind of like, you know, they just, they just fall into declarative programming because it's so much more natural. I could talk about, um, I could try to talk about other advanced topics, but I, I don't have time. There's lots of interesting um, topics in Mathematica, um, including uh, scoping, evaluation control, semantics of evaluation. Um, when I was preparing for this talk, I sent emails to um, the most experienced kernel developers at Wolfram asking them, you know, how we stack up and to other functional languages and so on, because I'm not an expert in that area. And we started these long discussion threads, and it was just beautiful, but I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff with you guys. Uh, I'll just embarrass myself. But um, anyway, it's really interesting stuff, and definitely, you know, hit me up. I mean, this, 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 um, the, the evaluation semantics of Mathematica, I don't know how, I don't know if there's other languages that have similar things, but it's, it's, it's pretty beautiful, and it's, well, and it's also, it's all, it can also get really, really complicated. Um, but we also have a, you know, an inner process communication protocol uh, called MathLink, which is really interesting, which lets you hook Mathematica kernels up together. Um, and uh, it's all very interesting, but I won't talk about that stuff. I want to jump right into um, MapReduce. Um, most people here are probably, you know, familiar with MapReduce. I, I don't have to belabor the concepts in MapReduce. Um, but I just wrote a blog post about it, and then I, did, I did this beautiful diagram, and I wanted to show you guys the diagram. Um, Anyway, so in MapReduce, um, you're, uh, you're basically just responsible for writing two functions, right? It's a mapper and a reducer. And those, the mapper and the reducer exchange key value pairs. Um, and uh, the mapper ingests a key, an, an initial key value pair and outputs one or more transformed key value pairs, uh, I suppose zero or more key value, key value pairs. Um, and then those uh, outputs from the mapper then get um, aggregated by key in the shuffle and so-called shuffle and sort step. Um, and then that, that um, aggregated um, set of values with the key for those set of values gets, gets ingested by the reducer and the reducer outputs its own um, transform key value pair. And then uh, the results get, um, uh, those transform key value pairs then get ingested by the, another mapper and uh, rinse and repeat. Um, so let me, let me show you how uh, the canonical Hello World example for MapReduce works in, uh, in, uh, in Mathematica using this package that we've written um, for, math, for uh, doing MapReduce in Mathematica called Hadoop Link. Um, so I'm, I'm, this word count program just counts the, the occurrence of each, of each different word um, in, a, in a corpus of text. So here's, here I'm, I'm doing that with... Uh, uh, Pride and Prejudice. I'm importing that from the web, and um, I'm, I can easily do this uh, this particular example in a single Mathematica kernel, just so I can check that my answer is right. Um, and my first step here is just to create key value pairs. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to use paragraphs in the in the book as uh, as the keys, and I'm going to use the dummy value of one for for the values for all those keys. Now I'm going to load that Hadoop link package, and um, I'm going to establish a link to, um, to the Hadoop cluster by pointing it to um, the master node um, and uh, define uh, what, the, what the file name uh, is going to be in, in the Hadoop file system. And I'm going to export uh, the, the key value pairs out to um, the, the Hadoop file system using this DFS export command. Um, and specifying that it should be in this binary sequence file format. Um, and this, this DFS export command is one of a bunch of different functions that have been written in this Hadoop link package for interacting with the Hadoop cluster. So now I need to write my mapper. My mapper is just going to um, take, so it gets that key value pair, which is the paragraph and the, and, uh, the value of one, and it takes that paragraph 
and it splits it up into words, um, and it just uh, maps over all those words and, and emits um, the word with, uh, with the value one again. Um, and this yield function is also part of the Hadoop link package. It says emit this uh, key value pair from the mapper. Then on the reducer side, um, remember that it's aggregated by key now, so I've got, um, now I've got um, a word here as the key and a list of values for that word. Uh, and that list of values is going to be a list of ones, um, and the number of ones in that list is going to be the number of times that word appeared in the, in the text. Um, so all I want to do is count up those ones. Well, okay, it's not quite a list. It's actually, it's actually a, an, a, an iterator. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing a call out to, um, to Java. So um, because uh, this, um, uh, this, this value uh, is, uh, is actually a Java iterator, and Mathematica has a, uh, a protocol for connecting with the Java runtime called JLink, and that's, what I'm, that's the syntax I'm using here. That means I don't have to count, I don't have to store those values in memory. This, if this was a huge corpus of text, th those wouldn't fit in memory. Um, and then I just go ahead and I yield uh, the word in the sum, um, and, um, and then I run the job. So I've got uh, uh, my input file and my output directory in, in the Hadoop file system, um, and I run the, fu I, uh, run the function Hadoop map reduce job, giving it that link that I created before to the, to the cluster. I give the job a name, uh, and the input file and the output file, and then I, I, I tell it what, um, what the definition of the mapper and the reducer are. Um, and those are pure functions that I've, that I've uh, bound to these symbols. Um, the, the Hadoop MapReduce job expects a pure function. Um, um, and um, when I evaluate that expression, Mathematica gives me a, um, Hadoop link gives me a progress meter that tells me uh, the progress of the map and the reduce. So what's actually happening here is on the client side, Mathematica is talking to a client side JVM to package up um, all, the, all the definitions for the Mathematica functions, the mapper and the reducer, um, that are being used um, to, together with all the regular class files that would be used for Hadoop job and um, exports that out to the Hadoop file system, which is then ingested in by the, um, by the, the job tracker on the master node. The master node then kicks off a bunch of processes on the slave nodes. Um, each, um, each process launches a, uh, a, a new instance of a JVM and a, and a new instance of, of a math kernel. Um, and this is for each map or reduce task that is running on, the, on, the, um, on, the, on that slave node. And there could be multiple of those map and reduce tasks running on a slave. Um, now, when that's done, when it's running the map or the reduce, reduce process. Um, so those key value pairs then um, uh, get output to, uh, to HDFS. When everything's done, Mathematica can import the results back in, back in um, from HDFS on the client side. So that's the hello world example um, for, for Hadoop link. Um, and so now let me talk about a, um, um, a more serious um, effort to, to write a, a MapReduce um, algorithm in uh, using this um, Hadoop link package in Mathematica. Well, um, you, I told you before that I have some background in, in, cert, in um, doing genomics and stuff. So, so I wanted to try to write a little genome search engine um, using Hadoop link. Um, so um, as a little toy example of that, I'm gonna, basically I'm gonna prototype this, this search engine um, using, this, using just a, a very small snippet of genome so this is going to be the, the mitochondrial genome, um, which um, I'm grabbing in uh, Mathematica using a, a data function, a built-in data function. Um, and uh, and this, is, uh, this is the first 30 characters of the genome, but this is about maybe 16,000 um, bases. It's, it's a very, very small amount of the genome. The full genome for the human is like uh, 3 billion bases. Um, and I'm going to define a query that I want to search for, a query string that I want to search for on the genome. Um, and since this is a small uh, test case, um, I can just go ahead and search um, uh, uh, the, uh, this small snippet of genome for that query, and I know that it only appears once, and it appears at position 515. So now I'm going to create my key value pairs. 
my key value pairs are just going to be an index of the genome. I'm going to take every letter in the genome, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to attach the uh, position of that letter in the genome as the value. And those are my key value pairs that I'm going to use. Now, the mapper knows two things. It knows that key value pair, which is just going to be one of those, one of those, um, one of these guys. So one of these, like C4, that's going to be what the, what the mapper knows about. Uh, that's the base and the genome position in the mapper. And it also knows what the query, what the query uh, sequence is. Those are the only two things the mapper knows. So I'm not going to belabor the, the code here. I'm just going to show you a diagram that will hopefully explain what this mapper is doing. Um, if all the mapper knows about is a, single, is a single base on the genome in its position, and it knows the query sequence, how can it possibly align the query sequence with the genome? It doesn't know what the genome is. Well, it can't. All it can really do is, is say, okay, I know there's an A at this position on the genome, um, and I know where it is. And I know, that, I know where every A is in the query. So I'll just output every, sing, every possible alignment of the, of the query with the genome, um, uh, aligning it on, on every A in the, in the query. So, so this is just like, you know, kind of stupid, but it's, it's, it, it's okay. It's, it's going to work anyway because I'm going to assume that the query is not really that long. Um, and my algorithm in the end is going to scale with the size of the query, which is actually very nice behavior. Um, I, don't, I don't want it to sc uh, scale with the size of the genome itself. I want it to scale with the size of the query. I can take care of the scaling with the size of the genome with, with Hadoop. Um, I'll just throw more nodes at it until, until it's, uh, it takes a uh, short enough amount of time. But um, uh, it's, it's very nice behavior for it to scale with just the size of the query. Um, so the key value pairs that I output from the mapper are going to be um, the, uh, the position of the, of the query given that the, that A aligned um, at each possible position on the, on the genome. Um, and, I'm, and I'm just color coding the key um, and the value. Uh, this is the key and this is the value output for each case. So it emits like, in this case, uh, one, two, three, four, five five different key value pairs. The only one that's correct is this first one in green. All the rest of them are wrong, but I'm, I'm going to let the, the reducer sort the rest of that out. So all the reducer is doing is it's, it's getting uh, uh, the match position on the genome, and I'm not expecting you to follow this code, but um, just conceptually speaking, it's just getting this match posi position on the genome as the key, and the values for that match position are all the query, um, all the positions in the query that matched um, different, different, uh, different index uh, key value pairs on the, um, on, on the genome. And all the reducer has to do is check that it got a full collection, a full sequence of, um, of uh, values from one to the size of the, of the query. If it did, then it knows that it got a complete match. Um, and it just outputs that. Um, it just emits that, uh, that match with the position. So it's straightforward. I'm not expecting you to. I'm not very good at explaining this algorithm. Is the problem? Um, but uh, let's run it and see if it if it works. So um, uh, I've I've defined my query, an input output file. Again, I run my Hadoop MapReduce job um, with the link that I established and um, the search mapper and the reducer. And I run it and. Lo and behold, I find that when I import the results back into Mathematica, um, it, it finds, the correct, uh, it finds the, the correct sequence at the correct position. So, so yay, this is good. This is working. So now what I want to do is scale this up, right? I want to scale this up. I want to search the whole human genome. I don't want to stop there. I want to search, I want to search multiple genomes. I want to like put like every single genome known to man in Hadoop and search using this algorithm. And um, so, so that takes me to the challenges part of my talk. Um, the problem is that when I, when I scale this al algorithm up to search the entire human genome, um, my Hadoop cluster just blows up. Basically just starts, nodes start dying. We get, start getting Nagios alerts saying, yeah, this node is dead. Um, and um, 
this took some drill down to figure out what was going on. We're getting these kind of cryptic errors saying that the, uh, you can't read this of course, but this error says that the garbage collector overhead limit was exceeded. So that's kind of a cryptic error. Um, and in debugging this, it seems um, after pouring through heap traces and so on, looks like what's happening is, well, the memory consumption that is used um, on, on, each, on, each, on each slave node, um, when, when you're running a MapReduce job using both Mathematica and the, and the JVM on the slave, um, is just way, way more than our, our cluster is configured to handle. Our cluster is configured to handle, right now, it's configured to handle uh, regular MapReduce jobs that only require a JVM for every map or reduce task. When you add a, a Mathematica uh, kernel to that for every single task, you start, uh, you start consuming much, much more memory on the slave. Um, unfortunately, that's a setting. Um, this is kind of a, a barrier because this is a setting that's, that's, um, that's made um, on a cluster-wide basis. There's no job-specific setting um, for, for determining the number of, of uh, mappers that will run simultaneously on a, on a node. Um, that's something that you set on a cluster-wide level. Um, and what, what I'd like to be able to do, and this is straightforward to support in, in, in Hadoop Link, is add job-specific options um, that just let you tune things like the size of the heap um, and so on. Um, but there's a real challenge in overcoming um, you know, cluster-wide um, uh, configurations. You don't really want people to have, to have to reconfigure their cluster just to run a job you know, using Mathematica. So, so we're going to have to figure out a way um, uh, around that. It's kind of an architecture um, problem for us. Um, but it's, it's fun, and we'll, um, we'll definitely uh, figure it out and, and make progress here. Um, that's all I have uh, for you today. I've gone over some core principles of Mathematica. Hopefully, these were enlightening. Um, some examples, and then talked about MapReduce um, with Mathematica and what we're, uh, what we're sort of dealing with in terms of challenges to, to, to scale it up and productize it. And I'll leave you with um, the, the link on GitHub for, uh, for Hadoop Link. It's been open sourced. Um, my Twitter handle and a picture of my favorite cellular automaton. I knew it. You guys are asleep. I don't blame you, though. It's not a question. It's a, maybe it's a question, it's a comment. But for this particular problem, yes. Uh, my understanding is that the best program that do is a group of programs called Bowtie. They build a reverse index, and they don't do the searching at all this way. And that's a much faster algorithm than that. So maybe Hadoop's not the right answer. For this it, it probably isn't. This, for me, this was kind of a, I'm not claiming this is the best algorithm at all. For me, this was like good prototyping ex um, exercise, um, but I but and there's you know I haven't I, people are using Hadoop for searching genomes I know that um, and they're optimized for specific types of searches I believe but I don't I have never looked into detail and uh, yeah. Well, most searches on genomes also have to accommodate errors. Yes, actually, actually it's right. Right. Actually, this, this algorithm is OK in terms of errors. If you, you, this is a very straightforward generalization of the reducer here, which, which accommodates any, um, any amount of error in the, um, in the match, actually. All you do, do is instead of checking that you have a full match, you just allow some leniency um, uh, in the reducer. So that's actually really straightforward. But, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if this was the wrong approach for searching genomes. But it's a good exercise for me to be doing as a developer because especially to come up with, you know, what happens when I scale this the way that we know customers are going to want to scale it. Um, Mathematica is a great prototyping, you know, environment. That's, that's clear. But we want to be able to scale all the algorithms too. And, um, so we need to solve all these problems, and it's good to have these experiences. But thank you for the comment. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so is it easier to have the debugging language to integrate with all of these other learning tools, like Cassandra or Hummingbird, or whatever? Else? Um, we haven't attempted to integrate with any NoSQL tools aside from HBase. Um, 
So actually, at this, uh, th in this um, GitHub repo, uh, another one of the repos there is, um, is an HBase link. Um, but uh, that's less well developed. Um, and, uh, but it's certainly one sort of on the roadmap. Yeah, this is open. I mean, well, this, this, this is freely available for you to use and extend, and we definitely welcome commits. Yeah. Uh, 